Paras Chopra has just announced the 10 projects that have been selected for batch five of his AI research lab, Lost Funk's residency program, which is focused on supporting cutting edge AI research from India. Welcome to our weekly Indian startup news show. I'm Caleb Friesen, your host, and you're watching Backstage with Millionaires. And before we dive into it, this channel is part of the Zero One Network by Zerota. Okay, now let's go through the 10 incredible projects that are being built in Lost Funk's Batch 5. Okay, so first of all, we have Mankaran and Alkama. These two are building robots that move just like cartoon characters. So if a character dances in a quirky way, then their robot should be able to copy that exactly. And they're using what's called reinforcement learning here to teach their robots through trial and error by giving them rewards for nailing the moves. And over the next six weeks in Bengaluru, they're gonna be bringing this animated vision to life. Next up, we have Rudranj, who's building a TikTok-style platform for games called Games by Xeon. And you can come up with a random idea, like for example, cat clouds. And this AI platform is gonna turn that idea into a playable game, complete with art, mechanics, and levels. And the idea here is that you don't have to download anything. It's not gonna take time to queue up this game. It's just instant AI-powered fun. And it also learns what kinds of games you like. And then recommends similar ones to you. And of course, you can share clips, play other games from other people, and compete globally as well, or at least that's the long-term vision. Then after that, we have Kushi Mittal, who is literally aiming for the skies. She's building autonomous cargo aircraft. These are planes that fly themselves to deliver goods. And so over the next six weeks, she's gonna be retrofitting an existing plane with smart AI controls. And in the long term, her vision is to start the world's first autonomous airline. No pilots, just all handled by AI and software. Okay, next up we have Chitra Singh who's building an AI assistant that helps radiologists analyze spine MRIs much faster. Her AI model combines image recognition technology and language models to pull out key clinical insights for both scans and reports, potentially saving doctors hours per patient. Then after that we have Hari who is designing a smarter electric grid using reinforcement learning to balance energy supply and demand in real time to reduce waste. And then following this, we have Aditya De Silva, who's challenging AI to master complex video games. While typical models like AlphaZero take millions of training hours, he's aiming to train AI to master chess in just 50,000 self-play games. And that's incredible. He eventually wants to tackle games like Assassin's Creed, which are very data heavy and strategically way more complex, especially for an AI. Then we've got Tane Lohia, who is making Mixing AI with biology, he's using large language models and deep knowledge graphs to answer complex biological questions and even design new proteins. His first focus is going to be agriculture, and the idea is to use AI to boost crop science and sustainability. After that, we have Nishit Goyal, who is building an AI tutor called Appu for kids between three and eight years old. But this isn't just an app, it's an interactive learning assistant that teaches through games and conversations. And so over the next six weeks, he's going to be developing what he calls a cursor for learning by running interviews with parents and educators to make a product that's truly useful for teaching. Then after that, we have Timber and Godrig, and they're building a game called Sentient Struggle. Basically, it's squid games, but for AI models. And the idea is to test LLMs on social reasoning. And so over the next six weeks, they're going to be working on giving these AI agents personality and strategy so that they can act less like bots and more like real people players. And then finally, we have Arnav Bansal, who is working on a lightning fast search engine called findparts.in to help electrical engineers find electrical components for their projects. And Bara says that Arnav's system aims to deliver results in under 10 milliseconds from a pool of millions of items. And so, yeah, that is the complete 10 project lineup of Lost Funk's fifth batch. But continuing to talk about AI here, Sarvam AI, which is based in Bengaluru, is is actually going to be open sourcing its large language models under the India AI mission. And what that means is that the core code and model weights are going to be made publicly available for anybody to use, modify, or build on. 
And Sargam's co-founder Vivek Raghavan confirmed this plan saying the release will happen under permissible licenses. And so this is really big because Sarvam isn't just any startup. They're actually building India's first sovereign LLM focused on reasoning, voice tasks, and fluency across Indian languages. And so to help them to achieve their goals, Sarvam has actually received the highest subsidy of 98.68 crore rupees against a total bill of 246 crore rupees to access 4,096 NVIDIA H100 GPUs for six months. Now, earlier this year, there was some debate about whether these government-funded models should be open-sourced. And even Bharat Chopra, who we just talked about, had questioned why taxpayer-funded models weren't being made open-source. And so it looks like some of that pressure might have actually worked. It might have done the job here. All right, next up in the news, this one is big, and we've been making videos about this for a very long time, actually since pretty much the beginning of Backstage with Millionaire's Tesla has finally officially properly entered the Indian market. And this is actually coming eight years after Elon Musk first started talking about it. The company's first showroom has opened in Mumbai and at the launch event, Maharashtra's chief minister said that Tesla's arrival isn't just the opening of a showroom. It's a clear signal that innovation and sustainability have entered India. And so to kick things off, Tesla has launched its best-selling mid-sized electric SUV, the Model Y. And the cheapest version is gonna cost you at least 61 lakh rupees. But here's the thing though. That same Model Y in the United States costs $37,490, which is roughly 32 lakh rupees, which means that if you're buying a Tesla in India, you're paying almost twice as much as somebody in the United States. So why is that? Well, the answer to this question largely lies in India's steep import duties. Electric vehicles that are imported as completely built units, CBUs, are taxed heavily, with import duties ranging from 70 to 100% depending on the car's value. And on top of that, there's a 5% GST, customs handling charges, compensation sets, shipping and insurance costs. And so all of that adds up pretty fast, but that's not all because if you compare Tesla's Model Y in India and in the United States, it's not just more expensive here, you're also getting a slightly inferior product. The Indian version also has a lower range and top speed compared to the one sold in the United States. Now, Tesla Tesla could have avoided a lot of these charges. They could have brought down the cost of the Model Y in India significantly if they had opted into India's new EV incentive scheme. The scheme offers a steep reduction in import duties as low as 15% if they've committed to investing 4,150 crore rupees into local manufacturing. But Tesla decided that they did not want to opt into that, probably because they just want to first test the market and see if there's actually demand for Teslas in India. But the thing is, Tesla is already very late to this market. It's gonna be a tough market to crack. It's already dominated by players like Tata and Mahindra who are offering EVs starting as low as eight lakh rupees. All right, next up in the news, Zepto's 10 minute food delivery service, Zepto Cafe is slowing down. After rapid expansion, the company is now scaling back operations due to supply chain issues and a shortage of trained kitchen staff. Their daily orders have dropped from a peak of over 120,000 to around 65,000 now between May and June. And Zepto has also shut down cafe services at 44 of its 1,000 locations. It seems like the company has also cut down on their marketing spend and paused new dark store launches as well, all in an effort to control their cash burn. So let's see if the new $500 million that have come in recently through investment could change things for the company, which has been falling behind lately. All right, now let's move into some quick news items items here. First of all, Indian logistics unicorn Porter has turned profitable for the first time, posting 54 crore rupees in profit over 4,300 crore rupees in revenue in FY25. And then we also have Jupiter Money securing a corporate agency license from IRDAI, allowing the Neobank to distribute life, health, and general insurance products directly through its platform. All right, next up, I had asked you all what you launched this week. And as usual, a bunch of people chimed in and shared what they've been working on throughout the week. So here are my three favorite picks. So first of all, we have this YouTube research tool called Next Scientist by Sorov Singh. It basically scans YouTube videos and pulls out important stuff and helps you to research or study all without having to go through multiple videos. 
and hours of content. Next, we have Cypher XAI built by Paresh. It's an AI tool that acts like a super smart assistant for retail and e-commerce businesses. And so instead of digging through dashboards or spreadsheets, you can just ask it questions like, how are my sales doing today? And then it'll instantly give you clear answers. Plus, it'll suggest what to do next, like which product to promote or whether to adjust pricing. And then finally, we have MCP Shell by Parted. It's a tool that lives in your terminal and lets you chat with any AI model. And it can help you manage servers, organize tools, and soon it'll also be able to handle complex tasks automatically. And plus, it's open source, so you can customize it for your needs. Okay, now let's move to the funding news segment for today's video. This week, Indian startups raised $83 million, which is just slightly lower than last week's $84 million, but it is also below the trend line. So let's take a look at some of the companies that raised funds this week. The first one I want to talk about here is Bengaluru-based deep tech startup QPAI. They're building quantum computers and AI systems for businesses that tackle problems that are too complex for regular computers to handle, like, for example, drug discovery or material design and financial forecasting. And they've raised $32 million in their Series A round. After that, we have Mumbai-based fashion quick commerce startup Knot. They're taking quick commerce one step further by offering a 60-minute delivery across Mumbai with a try and buy option. So you can try outfits out at home and then return what doesn't feel right, right then and there. And they also have this AI virtual try-on feature that helps you to pick the right thing before you've even ordered it. And they've raised $3 million in their pre-series A round. Following that, we have Bengaluru-based video AI platform Troupier, which turns your basic screen recordings into polished professional videos with voiceovers, avatars, zooming, background music, and even a written tutorial all automatically. And Troupier is competing with a lot of other players right now, like for example, Loom. Also, Troupier isn't stopping at just screen recordings. They also want to generate videos from documents, kind of like how Google's Notebook LM generates podcasts from documents. And the platform is already being used by more than 10,000 teams globally, which is incredibly impressive for a company that started in 2023. According to one of the company's founders, Shivali Goyal, Software should be easy to explain, but until now, making good product videos meant spending hours editing or thousands of dollars on production. And so Troupier wants to change that. And I've actually been friends with one of the company's founders, Pratish Gupta, all the way back since 2019, uh, less than one year after we had started Backstage with Millionaires. And so he has seen Backstage with Millionaires grow from 1,000 subs all the way to more than a million subs. And I now have also gotten a chance to see him and his startup journey progress as well. And so Troupier has raised $3 million in their seed round and big congrats, guys. Okay, next up we have Mumbai-based on-demand ambulance booking platform Dial4242, which is basically like an Uber for ambulances. And they've raised nine crore rupees, that's $1.04 million in their pre-series A round. And then finally, we have Bengaluru-based wedding planning company, The Wedding Company, and they let you plan your entire wedding right from booking your venue you to booking your photographers and your caterers all on a single platform, and they raised $1 million in their pre-seed round. All right, that is all the Indian startup news that I have for you all this week. I really hope that you enjoyed the video, and I do apologize that there's any issues with the audio. I know the video quality is not looking that great. I actually just recently moved back to Bengaluru after being outside in Northeast India since 2023, and so I still haven't gotten everything set up yet for from a uh, camera and microphone standpoint. So do bear with me as I make this transition, but I do appreciate you all tuning in nonetheless. And yeah, with that said, I'm Caleb Friesen and this has been Backstage with Millionaires. I'll catch you in the next one.